Welcome, everybody. Um, I think I know most of you, a few people I don't know. Um, so Bettina and I are going to uh, facilitate uh, this discussion. I thought JC uh, and Kevin did a nice job of uh, introducing uh, developmental neuroscience. I think that UVA has a historic strength and a current strength uh, in developmental uh, neuroscience, ranging from the nitty gritty um, biochemistry and cell biological mechanisms, all the way up to systems um, and even human uh, development. So um, this is an obvious strength. I think that we are particularly good at using uh, central resources because um, we are a fairly uh, collaborative crew. Uh, we've uh, taken advantage of um, Brain Institute collaborative, uh, presidential collaborative um, neuroscience grants. Uh, and I, I don't think she's here now, but one of the recipients was uh, is a current faculty uh, member, Megan uh, Puglia, uh, who received one four or five years ago. Um, one thing that uh, JC didn't mention is that um, these fundamental mechanisms of uh, development also um, seem to be quite important for disassembling the nervous system. The same principles uh, used to assemble the nervous system are often exploited uh, to disassemble the nervous system. So we can even think of, um, you know, there's obvious things like congenital disorders, um, uh, congenital deafness, congenital blindness, um, different sensory disorders, which UVA also has a strength in um, development of the sensory systems. But you can also think of uh, schizophrenia and certainly autism, uh, mental retardation. Um, and one could make an argument that uh, neurodegenerative diseases like ALS and Alzheimer's are um, actually neuro, uh, neurodevelopmental disorders. Um, so with that, I don't um, wanna take up too much time. Bettina and I uh, spoke about this uh, a little bit earlier. And I think what we would love to do um, is hear everybody's um, ideas and then come back to the main room with, you know, kind of synthesizing maybe three or four kind of big ideas. Um, I think, you know, it might not be realistic to think about this in terms of like um, vertical integration of like one uh, big thing, although, you know, um, I'm, I'm, we're certainly open to it. But I think with this group, we're particularly good at kind of horizontal integration. Um, and I don't know, maybe I can stop there and Bettina, uh, if you wanted to um, fill in anything that I've missed. Um, well, so I want to just point out uh, what Chris and I were thinking we should make sure that we stop with individual comments, maybe three or four minutes before they yank us out of the breakout rooms so that we can really focus on what we want to say in the main session again to make sure we make a point that that will have some traction in front of everyone. So I suggest that we stop maybe at 12.35 and that will give us like two minutes or even 34, give us three minutes, just kind of, um, Chris and I will try to keep track of the main points that are being made. Um, so um, I listened to some of the other sessions and I think the, the vertical integration is a, is a really big point that is being made, but we were thinking, is there a horizontal integration across multiple fields where people work at this more or less the same level of inquiry and just going up or down one. And maybe there's a lot of strengths that we are missing um, that uh, are very like low hanging fruit, things that we could very easily actually work together on. And so um, any thoughts that you have on, on this or, or anything else, uh, please just go ahead and raise your hand and 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 um, make your comments, and we'll try to come up with a with a kind of small list of things that we might want to ask. But we think this is something that the, the institution should invest in, uh, that we would really move the needle. Mm -hmm. So with that, we can open up the the floor. Jung Bum, could you could you maybe uh, speak about um, you know kind of our unique position with respect to development of sensory systems? Um, just I'm I was away just for two minutes. I missed I think your introduction. Um, oh, yeah, but maybe like uh, you know I, I was thinking that UVA is particularly good at development of sensory systems, whether it be um, vision or hearing or touch. 
taste, uh, things like that. So uh, I don't know if you had anything to add there. Or we can just, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. I can, oh, JC has a, yeah. Jungbom, you may think for 35 <laughs> seconds while JC's the well, Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. You know, we have a lot of strengths, a lot of history here in, in olfactory system, test system, uh, now vision, and, and, and obviously uh, hearing. So I, th I think that's definitely a strength, uh, strength we can build on. Um, and the other point that uh, Chris was making earlier is that this, uh, both of you and, uh, uh, and the platinum is making it a horizontal uh, integration, which I really like. You know, we have we go from the molecular mechanism biochemistry all the way to human development. Uh, so perhaps we can fit in some of the gaps that we are a little bit lacking now. The way I see it, it's probably in circuit development, right? We have you know early molecular development. We have whole animal system development, like you know all the tests, uh, all the sensory system we mentioned earlier. Then of course it's human development. It seems we're lacking a little bit on circuit development. Uh, Adama in her lab is really, you know, she's probably the newest hire in that direction, trying to look at synaptic development. But maybe we can build on, you know, that area just a little bit more, having a couple of hires into that area in various departments. I think that would be a great idea. Adama, if, if you have a microphone, could you speak to like, do you think we need more, you know, um, computational? Um, people or more people, you know, actually doing like the what work or like what, what what's the missing uh, link here for um, systems level circuit analysis? Sorry, Chris, I, I just have to unmute myself. Uh, like what JC said, we really are missing. I think new hires would help here. Uh, we're, with circuit development is picking up speed, especially now with the development of new tools. Uh, some tools weren't available before and we simply weren't able to tackle it as good as we can now. New hires would really help a lot. Uh, I do agree there and investing in them thoroughly, not just you know with money, but also with space and with collaborations and with other support. And I do think that we can exchange a lot of not just ideas, but also collaborations with the other breakout room and intellectual disabilities section. Uh, like what you mentioned, the assembly of nervous system is also the disassembly. So this is something where circuit development will really fit in and make great leaps in trying to explain how uh, a disordered nervous system actually arises. And I think we can really fill in the gap with circuit development on what's missing mechanistically from all of the human psychiatric disorders, uh, which is kind of where my lab is going itself. Could you say more about um, new tools? I mean, when, when, I, when I hear tools, I, I think, well, maybe this could be something Maybe you're thinking about like viral cores or some, you know, like tracing expertise that could actually benefit everybody um, you know, from, from the other session. Specifically, a really good viral core. Uh, what has plagued the development, the, the circuit development field is the, as you all know, the, the, the toxicity of current viral tools. There are new ones being developed, but to support that demand and to really support every lab that is willing to use them, we would need a really solid viral core with a fast turnaround. Thank you. I'm seeing a bunch of, oh, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, uh, let me see. I think we definitely need the IPHC cell core here. Can, um, I've, I've seen this a lot in the chat um, that from um, Kyle, uh, and then Alex, you seconded uh, the IPSC core. Maybe I can pull um, uh, Sarah Segrist into this to talk about uh, stem cells here at UVA, um, you know, studying stem cells, and then where we could potentially be going from not only stem cells in an animal, but also you know thinking about IPSCs and um, things like that. Are you are you there, Sarah? Yeah, I'm here. I think that's kind of a tough question because there really is no one who's doing very much stem cell work. I feel like, yeah, it's a huge, I mean, I feel like I would love to get some um, stem cell people here. Um, I think that's like a three to four person hire though. I mean, in order to, I mean, I think a lot of people, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, like, right? A lot of people kind of dip in and use different resources that a, that a stem cell core could provide. But um, I think, yeah, it's just, I, don't, I wouldn't even know where to start because it's like the numbers in that area are like zero. 
Kyle, do you have something to add to this? Yeah, I, I guess just to follow up on that, like I, I agree, you know, hiring people with direct expertise in in stem cells, right? Um, and maybe a three to four person to hire is is in the ballpark. And I, but I think that should be very doable um, with this kind of investment. And there's a lot um, to follow up with on Sarah's comment. I think there's a lot of people that that would benefit directly and indirectly from such an investment. Um, you know, I, I agree with Sarah that maybe we don't have the, the faculty expertise that would um, make it great right now, but there's a lot of people that rely on such technology or use such technology. Like we use stem cells, but we don't, you know, and we, we drive differentiation, but we don't study stem cells, um, you know, and the loss of that, that core, I think hurt, hurt us and I'm sure lots of other people. Um, just as a quick comment, I, I think we could decide to make that a, a play for that strongly because one of the things that we really need is to lower the bar for people to enter a field that they're not familiar with and having a core really helps with that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is what are people thinking about, um, you know, big data kinds of things, you know, huge list of gene names that have been linked by GWAS studies or something to a neurodevelopmental problem. Is there, an, is there something that we might want that we might need that would help us? Um, how can we use the model systems to maybe validate things and uh, have that be part of the horizontal and vertical integration, you know? Uh, coming down from the disease, either JC or, or I forget, Kevin was, was, was mentioning, you know, we can go up and down between human disease and model systems. And I think we could really benefit from knowing more about what are the strengths of what, what do people know? What are people good at? And how could we uh, work together to use each other's strengths to move up a level, down a level, or, or, or just into a more a stronger synergy uh, among ourselves. So I just want to mention briefly, there's a new faculty member in cell biology, Karen Hershey, who has started a center for developmental genomics. And so she is really interested uh, and she is um, uh, co cooperating or collaborating with INOVA um, and has access to um, uh, sequenced patient genomes, pediatric patients. So uh, I think we should maybe also, I, I'd like to hear what people are thinking about what, what are you missing? Is there something that in this area that you might find could be an ask, something that we would really benefit from as a community? Um, I want to go to we and then John, who can maybe, uh, I want to ask John specifically after, after we comments um, to maybe uh, talk a little bit about the St. Jude's model in relation to what you were talking about, uh, uh, Bettina. Um, but go ahead, we. Yeah, and uh, just, you know, going off the previous comments about course, you know, I had a quick thought about the concept of soft course because establishing many cores are very expensive, you know, uh, endeavor. So, however, we have plenty of expertise here, you know, on different aspects, you know, like, you know, like I know John Bong is super good with CRISPR manipulation to create mice, you know, and uh, if we could, you know, if the institution pr provide some incentives and some structure to build this kind of soft core. So many of us PI can serve on those kind of roles, but that will be time consuming for sure. So we need some structure and incentives. Then to really, the point is the point of a core is reduce energy barrier for doing something. So therefore, a soft core could work very well actually, and also highly adaptable, highly uh, also more scientific than just technical cores inside that. So that could pay off, you know, uh, tremendously. The second idea is about clusters are higher, and uh, and uh, and for my observation, hiring is super critical, and uh, sometimes it's impossible to hire three to four people. But we could do a you know grassroots method to really figure out what we have so far, and maybe to figure out what is particularly the missing. Then can hire one or two to fulfill the need. And also, when we do that way, we we'll, we can also hire very specifically. Then the connection might be better than hire a, a big guy you know may not connect well with the community. Mm -hmm. So that may pay off better actually than a just huge hire. Those are my two cents. Thanks, we. Um, John. Yeah, I guess to Bettina's uh, question, I think if, if you're going to go down the data science route, you would do it for almost like rare 
like genetic neurodevelopmental disorders and, and, and kind of pitch it in the, in the frame of personalized medicine um, for those individuals. I think there, there's such great resources already out there with big, si big data sciences. I mean, I'm thinking the Simons Foundation, their website is just phenomenal and they offer so many resources in that data science sphere that, that the field can already tap into. Um, but I think if, if, if we interface with data science in the context of neurodevelopment, the, the, the rare genetic neurodevelopmental disorders and kind of personalized medicine would be maybe the way to pitch it. And you could, you know, obviously have a bank for that, for that individual where their fibroblasts could be generated into uh, pluripotent stem cells and then neurons or, or whatever and, and tackle it that way. Um, and I know that, you know, the NIH is, is putting more into some of the rare forms of, of disease. Um, you know, St. Saint, Saint Jude did it uh, 15 years ago for, for pediatric cancer. Um, they did it with Wash U and it was a huge investment and it, it, it had huge uh, benefits to the, to the community. But I, I feel like, you know, in, in the neurodevelopmental space, the disorder space, things like the RET Foundation, the Simons Foundation, they've already kind of done it on the population level. Um, I also am going to keep you kind of on the hook here, uh, John. There was a comment uh, earlier uh, from Marcos um, asking about um, exploring the role of microbiome in uh, neural development. And I know that, you know, there's a lot of uh, folks like you uh, dipping your toes in the water uh, of neurodevelopment. Uh, and um, so, so I kind of want to um, ask you about um, whether there's anything going on with the microbiome, and then also, you know, how do we keep, how, how do we start to kind of integrate uh, the brain uh, immune glia um, center um, into some of these neurodevelopmental questions? Yeah. So in terms of the microbiome, um, the the Tumi model at UVA is, is is doing really well. They just hired, they just recruited in Carrie Coward and. Um, from WashU a, a couple a year ago or so, and she she takes microbiome from from human um, human children and puts them into germ-free mice, and they can re recapitulate some of the intellectual disabilities and other uh, facets of it. And um, you know, Bill Petrie is also doing a lot of this with his Bangladesh cohort, um, and he he's been collecting samples from from that cohort for 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 a couple of decades now. And doing work with the the, <clears throat> the Gates Foundation, it's a, it's a you know it's a the 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 data in the autism sphere is is quite compelling for the microbiome. Um, <clears throat> you know we'll see how that that extends over population levels, but it, it it could be could be an opportunity there for sure. Thank you, Alex. Do you have your hand up? So just follow up what I made in comment. I feel for the class the high there. It's really ideal if we can try to balance the top down and also the bottom up for the grass grassroots input. So I was thinking about I like this format. So we have breakout law, we have a common should we share idea. So why don't we okay in the brain still then we set a several things. For example, a microbiome could be one, right? And then we set a new development could be another. We set different things and then ask faculty to sign up. And then maybe the brain still assign one of group leader for this. And then we discuss. So the first thing, what our issues are, and then whether there's some common area and what kind of class are higher would benefit us as the most, and then will be the final report, right? So it's not like every final report, everybody have to do an honor for the uh, hiring, but I think this may give us some more gra grassroots input for the class that hire. Yeah. Maybe I can pull in Harry at this point to talk about, you know, you, you've had this model or you've seen a lot of these things at Virginia Tech uh, when you were developing your school. Uh, there. Um, how have you seen cluster hires and, and development of cores uh, working or benefiting uh, the community? Pros and cons. Well, so let me start with the cores. The cores. The challenge with the cores is that uh, keep keeping them up to date, keeping people who run these cores current with technology, and certainly when it comes to induced pluripotent stem cells. I mean, it's it's been moving so fast; it's unbelievable. I mean, unless someone really has uh, their life's investment in it. Uh, I mean, they would have gotten out of touch. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, what we said that, that you, we should really 
uh, bring in people that have that expertise and are willing to, to share that with others rather than doing course. When it comes to cluster hires, I do think that development really lends itself uh, for cluster hires because you, know, you can take a developmental uh, uh, lens uh, to almost any uh, approach, whether that is neuroimmune, whether it's genetics, whether it's circuit systems, whether it's sensory. And I actually like this idea really thinking about a cluster where the unifying theme is a development uh, and actually bringing together expertises from all those various areas. Like I can think at least of five or six and at least uh, you know a couple of those should be taking advantage of IPCs. I mean, particularly studying rare diseases that you couldn't otherwise unless you take fibroblasts from patients and reprogram them study. I think there's tremendous opportunities and uh, tremendous willingness, I think. The one thing I haven't heard, and that's something that we've done at, at Virginia Tech, well as bringing in other model organisms. I think that, you know, uh, um, anything from C. elegans, flies, zebrafish, we have some of that and we have some uh, people working on those, but not necessarily with a developmental focus, you know. Uh, so I do think there's an opportunity to, you know, uh, think about additional model organisms to bring bring to bear. Thanks, Harry. So we just got the notice. To... Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we just got the notice. We have a hundred and some seconds left. So what, are, Chris? What 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 are, what are we going to say to the whole room? What what do we think um, is standing out to us? Um, I think from I think what everybody. I'm hearing uh, is that um, you know cluster hires to unify. Um, uh, some of these areas and build out some of the things that we may have lost uh, recently. Um, the notion of uh, soft cores and maybe uh, maybe the incentive for a soft core is is um, to for the brain institute or whomever to pay for one or two techs in that person's lab, so the person the PI benefits, but also provides a service to the community as part of that deal. Um, I'm hearing uh, that there could be some uh, interesting space for rare genetics. Um, uh, if, if we um, collaborate with the big data, um, the, the School of Data Science and, and potentially carry Hershey, uh, and that could also integrate into IPSCs and uh, things like that. Um, what am I missing, everybody, before we jump off? Yeah, so I think that what Alex was was suggesting, and, and this is not necessarily, you know, this doesn't cost any money, we can get together in interest groups and, and get more informed of each mm -hmm. other's expertise. So that we should do, that's kind of a no brainer. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we can mention it or not because it's not gonna cost money for us to do that. So we should definitely do that. I, I do like that a lot. Um, and, um, you know, everything else, I'm not really sure how the money is gonna be doled out, but I think we need to make a strong argument that, um, developmental perspective um, is something that we are really good at and we 